Welcome in. Good day, everyone. We, of course, are glad you guys could join us again for another Talk It Over um, in our series of Who Do You Think You Are? And for some reason, I always think of one song that pops in my head. I'm not going to say it, but you probably know it if you are in the generation of mine. You might know who or who the artists are. But anyway. The older generation. <laughs> yeah, slightly older generation. Um, but before we dive too far uh, into, into that uh, rabbit hole there, we're going to uh, do a little catch up. Uh, of course, we have Leanne and uh, Michaela here with me today. Um, so, weeks, how have things been uh, for you guys? I know it's been a little bit since you guys have been here, but uh, how are things going? Good. The weather has been really nice and sunny, and I feel like summer is upon us, which I love. And so it's just getting outside and getting things caught up that I, we've been ignoring over the winter months, because um, now we can. Um, yeah, and just... We cleaned out the garage one week and then we were working on the yard and the backyard and the gardens and everything now, so it's good. I have a question. Is the sauna staying? Oh, not the sauna. The hot tub staying or or you're going to get rid of it? As far as I know, it's staying. It's staying. It's staying. Moment, yeah. Yeah, okay. We haven't, haven't changed any decision on that yet. So No. Okay. We still need to hook it up. Yeah. Okay. But that's that's so all on the used. list. That's all on yeah. the list of nice. things to be cleaned cleaned up and off this year off the list of things that need to be done. Yes. So. Okay. Slow and steady. It's we a little get bit really good at procrastinating on a lot of those things. <laughs> well, it's difficult, though, because all of a sudden you have, like, 37 projects to do, yeah. and you have to start on one of them, and you work at one, and then, okay, we got a good chunk of that done, then you go to another one, and, well, now this one's starting to come back, and you just kind of seem to transition between mm -hmm. two and not get to them all, unfortunately. It just seems to be the way it is when you own a house. It just... There's multiple projects that all need to be done all at once, and you just. But we're getting things done. We're getting so things yeah, done. It's, it's just yeah, it's it's just the list is always longer than the time we have to get yes. it all completed. It just seems to be the way it goes in owning a house anyway. But right, something to look forward to. Yeah, you know, for John and I. So <laughs> <laughs> we're not there yet. So yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, for me, um, I had an interview this past week. Just uh, applied for another role at work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Thursday, Friday, I had like a spiritual retreat at work. And so the hours were a lot shorter, mm -hmm. which was nice. And we had a couple like guest speakers come in and they were talking about what it looks like to abide in Christ and then what a Sabbath looks like, mm -hmm. which, yeah, was really good. Lots of things to reflect on and just see like, what does Sabbath mean? Um, and it looks different for different people. Like, I think I've had this misconception that it's just kind of sleeping or just mm -hmm. like not doing a lot or not doing anything mm -hmm. but it's like about you know stopping and being able to find things that you delight in like doing fun things mm -hmm. uh the one thing the guy said was find like like your favorite food or like your favorite activity and save it for the sabbath mm -hmm. and so being able to do that fun thing mm -hmm. that day and that can bring you rest yeah. mm -hmm. in a different way than like sleep you know so it's been good yeah 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 resting isn't necessarily physically resting yes yeah. it, it's taking time to do things, yeah, that you enjoy or uh, bring, you know, are fun. You find fun anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fun for everyone, but right. things that you find fun. <laughs> you can certainly find rest in those areas, yeah. um, even when you're doing things. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really good. Because mm. for me, this week was not great. I did something to my knee. Yeah. It, looks, it looks like my kneecap shifted and popped mm -hmm. and caught some things and muscles and tendons and such and got to the point I couldn't bend it. So that wasn't really good. Um, but got to the doctor the next day and just been kind of resting it, icing it, uh, got it in a bit of a brace just to keep things kind of more stable. So hopefully, hopefully by Tuesday or Wednesday, following week here, we should be in much better shape. Mm -hmm. Um, it certainly forced me to slow down and an eight year old that wants to run around and play basketball and stuff that I've been told specifically <laughs> not to do, yeah. um, <laughs> can make it a little more difficult. Um, he's been... I would say somewhat understanding with the yeah. slower pace, um, but still wants to keep going. So just kind of keeping up with that. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been interesting. Mm -hmm. But with the garage being cleaned out, which we did, I've been able to do some small things. I've got uh, got a generator working that hadn't been run. Uh, working on chainsaw, got a motorcycle I'm working on. So a few small projects, but yeah. I find joy in doing those kind of things. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so for me, it's not necessarily work. I find it just kind of relaxing to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I can just be in my, kind of my own little space and just doing my own tinkering. thing, and tinkering, yeah. <laughs> logical thought process, things like that that allow me to just you know take things apart, put them back together, and then 
hopefully work better than they did before. So. Mm -hmm. Or worse. Or, know, well, and then yeah. i got to go back and start again, right? So, But it, it, it allows me just to have more focused thought, I guess. And I find I relax when I have more focused thought. Mm -hmm. So whether that's doing something like that or building Lego mm -hmm. or anything that's very focused oriented, I find certainly finds rest definitely in that for sure. Cool. So, yeah. So who do you think you are in the series? Uh, been really good so far. Mm -hmm. um, kind of on opening even some doors, maybe some small windows of areas that I didn't know mm -hmm. or didn't maybe fully understand as Craig's been talking about them yep. in, in finding out really who I am. Because sometimes it's easy to get lost in the social media and things talking, talking to us, telling us who we should be or how we should be or what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's been really good. Um, today's title is Your Most Important Assignment, which almost sounds mm -hmm. a little daunting. <laughs> most important assignment. It just seems very daunting in that sense. Uh, but I think Craig did a really good job of unpacking that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to have our scripture here, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. Um, and Michaela, if I could get you to read that for us, that'd be great. Sure. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent scripture. Mm -hmm. And I think that really kind of touches on that assignment yep. of, of what we are really assigned to do. Yep. Um, because again, yeah, it's very easy to get lost in the things that maybe you think you should be doing, or as we discuss, you know, things that you love, but you give those up for what you love more, which should be Christ. Yeah. So with this idea, now it could be difficult. I don't know. I, I'm going to find this one mm -hmm. a little bit difficult, but there's lots of things that bring us joy, lots of things that can be really passionate. Is there one thing out of maybe a plethora <laughs> that you find extremely passionate, that you are just very passionate about? For me, I would say when people share their God moments. Hmm. Like, that just gets me riled up okay. and moments of just, like, of course God did that, you know? Or just, like, these just so happen moments that so many of us come across and it's just, like, seeing God's hand in these, like, the big things but also in the small things, mm -hmm. too. And it just kind of moves my heart and also gets me into a posture of reflecting on like, how is God working in my life? How can I celebrate the God moments that's happening in my life for the people around me? And so, yeah, I just love, I love like in our life group, we'll talk about that too. And just, it's just a reminder that we're not alone and God cares about each of us and kind of meets us where we're at. And we just get to be a part of this journey, which is sometimes like a roller coaster and uh, <laughs> a bit all over the place, but he gives us things that we need um, to keep going. So, mm -hmm. yeah, get passionate about that. <laughs> That's a good example. I was thinking something, I don't know if there's so many things that I was thinking about. Yeah. Um, one of them is just even seeing people take their next step in their Christian faith and in their walk with God. It's if, like seeing people really starting to connect to it through the YouVersion Bible app mm -hmm. or decide, step up and say, yes, I want to get baptized or learning how to serve within the church and serve Christ. It's, I find it really encouraging and, um, I don't know, satisfying maybe, mm -hmm. of seeing like people just um, taking their next step, figuring out what God has for them. And then maybe it's rewarding of just helping them to kind of figure out what God has for them mm -hmm. and helping them through that. So do you find that like with your role at church, because mm -hmm. you're the one that receives kind of those connection or communication cards, do you find that like the joy yeah. and excitement kind of comes out of you? When yeah. You taking those steps? Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. And it, it naturally will go through seasons of, We'll have 
lots of people stepping up and taking steps and then it'll get quiet for a little bit but there are still few that are taking steps and then there's lots and so it's just it can um it's just really good to see people take steps when they're ready and when god is leading them that's mm-hmm. really good mm-hmm. yeah how about for you Anne? well that's good i gotta can you can you talk i don't know if i can talk those that's uh those are pretty good answers, and, and those are very, yeah, I don't know. I won't know if I can top those, but my, I think my one thing I'm passionate about is building, mm-hmm. and that, that's, we'll use a big word, multifaceted. Ah, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> on what that, what that entails. So I'm very passionate about physically building stuff, so mm-hmm. making things, structures, things like that. Love that kind of stuff. Um, again, building we'll say engines, things like that, taking them apart, putting them back together in the tinkering concept. But then also on the other side of that would be people. Mm. So building people up. So emotionally building them, um, I don't know, energizing them, things like that. I do enjoy. Um, I, I, as when I was part of the life kids team, Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of that with them Mm -hmm. and, and, trying to instill confidence in them that was there, but they didn't maybe necessarily feel they had. So building people up, motivating people, I guess that would be the other piece to that. Um, and I don't, I just, I love, yeah, I just love building. It's just, it's <laughs> weird, but it's love building. It doesn't really matter what it is or any of that. It's just love to build. Um, certainly, yeah, certainly mm-hmm. quite, quite enjoy that. Even even building card decks, yeah. building fishing things, building it's, it's it's anything, anything like that. I really really am passionate about. Um, so I don't know what that looks like for you guys. Um, maybe you guys have one thing that's you're just dead passionate about, or maybe it's like me where there's a few different levels of what it means that you're passionate about. Um, but please let us know in the comments um, what that might be for you. Uh, we of course would love to read them. Um, all right, so our next question now we're talking about. Um, uh, the most important assignment and things that God has assigned us. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the barriers that maybe prevent people from living as Christ's ambassador? And now Craig mm-hmm. talked about that in the message about being the ambassador for Christ. Mm-hmm. So what would maybe be some barriers that maybe would prevent people from doing that? I think um, just like... Mm-hmm. So, social status essentially like I'm afraid people are going to look down on me if I'm doing what God wants me to do but they're not Christians mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah. um, I'm just like they're going to think I'm weird or it's going to be uncomfortable or um even just, this is too hard and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, like the example that Craig gave of him just sitting in the sauna wanting to relax. And then some a guy comes in and you can tell he's had a rough day. And Craig feels this nudge of like, you need to talk to this guy. And I'm like, what, what would I have done in that situation? Would I have actually taken the time to talk to him? Or would I have said, um, that seems too scary. I'm not going to do that. And just, like, sit in the silence by myself. And then it gets really awkward because I know I'm supposed to be doing something and I'm not doing it. And then it just, <laughs> yeah, it gets tricky. But anyways, um, yeah, I, I think there's a bunch of different things that just, it, it's not comfortable. I don't, I don't really want to right now, like... So leaning on the feeling side? Yeah. Uh, allowing feelings to dictate a direction. Yes. But would you say that you've also had, like, a bad experience where you have, like, you know, done what maybe you felt the Spirit was telling you to do and then, like, they responded negatively? Yeah. But that's more so because I needed to mature more in the ways to talk to people, mm-hmm. respond to them. I didn't do it in a vain nice loving way or didn't I thought it was and didn't come off that way I see that kind of thing okay because that could also be like a a trauma of like oh my goodness it happened this way before yeah that way again but yeah 
I'm sure you've grown a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely have. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, that resonates with me. And I think another piece to that is just like the fear of what is God calling me to do and to be? I don't know. The thought of like the potential he's given mm. each of us, like the whole, like, am I good enough? Am I good enough to step into this ambassador yep. role? Like, do I have the boldness? Do I have the words and even like the maturity, like you yeah. were saying, to step out and to share God in this very like bold way. And I'll often underestimate what God can do through me and just make it about like, what can I do in my own strength? Which after a while, like you'll realize you can't do anything really without Christ and right. like his power in and through you. So figuring out how do I rely on the spirit to give me that boldness and that drive to like step out anyways and seeing like it serves that person in a way that like God wanted to meet them, but then also know you're blessed too. Mm -hmm. Um, Because God, like God got to use you and you got to be a part of his kingdom work. But yeah, that fear, like if you let it, I've let it, you know, get to me too much to the point where I just say no. (laughs) And then I get to miss out on what God wants to do, which is sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's lots of barriers that we can all run into depending on maybe we, where we are in our maturity level as mm-hmm. well as where we are in life in general. Um, what, what The one thing that comes to me is what Craig was talking about when, I can't remember the exact word for word, but when we when God calls us, it doesn't matter who rejects us. Kind of. Mm. What, oh, when he it? selects us. Yeah, when he selects yeah. us, it doesn't matter who rejects us. Yeah. Um, I think we kind of miss that. I think we flip it and like, who's going to reject us so God can't, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Y- yeah. You know what I mean? When So God won't select us or can't select us because, or I won't let God select me because I'm being going to be rejected. Right. Yeah. I think we kind of mix that one backwards. Um, I think a lot of people feel more of the worry, I guess, of like rejection over what God could do. Mm-hmm. And maybe the fear of, not being included then, maybe not being accepted, maybe not being a part of what's going on mm-hmm. because you're weird, as yeah. you're saying, like weird <laughs> or, or, or different, right? But maybe they, maybe what we need to do is start thinking, well, I'm already weird, so... Yeah. I'm already weird, you so... own it and... Yeah. I'm weird, you know. okay, I'm weird, right? And sometimes that can, be, that can be really difficult to accept the fact that maybe I am weird, maybe people will reject me, but I have to be okay with that. Mm. Maybe it's a, a hard stepping point too is a bit of a barrier of, of accepting and just being okay with, maybe they will reject me, maybe they won't like me, maybe they stop talking to me. But then on the other side of that is that's somebody that I really need to be around and having influence in me, yeah. Yeah. right? So I think it's a bit of a fine line, but it's it's taking those steps to getting past what they think of you. Mm. If you're going to be a true ambassador, it doesn't matter what they think of you, you're going to be that ambassador whether they accept, reject. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, in my opinion, that's kind of where the bat, it's kind of where we hit. But oftentimes if they give, I find if they give me a bad response to something I've said, it's because of something that they've experienced and it's, more about them than it is about me and what I'm mm. saying, but I take it so personally. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh shoot, what did I do that was so wrong? Um, but yeah, it's often about them and their stuff that we don't have exposure to, we don't know about because we're not in their head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that makes me think of like inviting. So as mm-hmm. we've been going through Alpha a couple times as a church, like being able to think of who are our friends and family who don't know Jesus and like we want to invite them into this alpha space. And for me, I can just easily like assume they're going to say no before mm-hmm. I even invite them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or if I just like constantly invite them over and over again, since it's like a 10 week period, then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm annoying them. Like at some point they're going to be like, oh, she's probably just messaging me to invite mm-hmm. her and not to like actually check in with them. Um, but just seeing like most people are okay to be invited to something. And if they're really not, they'll tell you. Yeah. Like yeah. stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, we'll respect you. But until then, like, why not? Because so often we um, like we don't even realize the opportunities that are out there or the things that we need until somebody invites us into it. 
Mm-hmm. Even like with yeah. giving at, at my job, like we're all about, you know, inviting people to donate to programs of our organization. And a lot of donors are like, if you didn't ask me, I wouldn't have known that was a need. Mm-hmm. So it's just this whole like there's a fear behind the ask. But then if we don't do the ask, then, you know, people's lives won't be impacted. Mm-hmm. And so we can be that barrier ourselves. Yeah. Which I know, mm-hmm. of course, the enemy will use that, but also other people and past experiences. But Yeah. The power of the invite, because we've all been invited yep. to church yep. in, in yeah. some yep. way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we become our own barrier. Yeah. The fear makes a barrier. Yeah. 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 But fear can be can be very strong. It can be hard to get past it sometimes. Even if it is inviting somebody that you've known for years, could even be family members. Sometimes that can still be difficult. Mm-hmm. Even though like my family knows I'm a Christian. They know what I do. Mm-hmm. They know, like, they know all about it. But yet, it still seems to be difficult. Mm. And it might be some of that fear of, will they reject me? Even though I already know they won't, yet still feel they will. It's it's a yeah. weird, like, it's it's weird yeah. how that feels, where where you all, where you still feel, oh, they, they could still reject me, even though they've known me. And they, like, it's just, it, I don't know, it's weird. I wonder, is it, does it also feel like unfamiliar for you? So if this is something, I don't know for sure, maybe you've been inviting your family to all sorts of things over the years, but if it's something more new, then it doesn't feel as familiar or like uncomfortable? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's weird because, yeah, it's like I've invited them to things before. It's just a matter of being, I guess, consistent with it. But then it feels like I'm like getting annoying now, mm-hmm. like see. right, and it's family, so I'm going to have to see them. Like I'm going to like <laughs> right, like I'm going to have to see them. So yeah, it's weird because it's like this balance of I don't want to be annoying and asking, and I don't want to be like this pushy person, but yet I want to be loving and I want the best for them. It's yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird how that dynamic shifts, and yeah, I don't. Know. It's it's weird, but I yeah. I, I totally believe we do get in our own way a lot of the yeah. times, especially with um, doing what Christ has asked us to, because sometimes we're just, we live in fear and just say no. Yeah. Yeah. Other times it's, where do we, will they accept what we're saying? Or are they going to really reject me? Are they going to... Well, and if God is asking us to yeah. do something, Satan's going to be like, I really don't want that to happen. So, yes. like, he's going to be working against us. And I believe that he even puts thoughts into our minds or oh, like the lies or something happens in our life so that we start thinking the lies of like well maybe they don't love me anymore what did I do what was wrong and it's not I've invited people in the past and they're like well Leanne I I like you I have no problems with you I just don't want to go to church so they're like mm-hmm. if there was if you were inviting me to something to just hang out then absolutely I'm up for it but I, church no thank you because that's just where they're at so really you just need to be like hey let's hang out at 11 o'clock on sunday morning <laughs> well, <no. laughs> we're just gonna hang out yeah no. <laughs> no we need to be honest about what we're inviting them to <laughs> you oh. blindside them yeah no it's probably not the best direction to go on that one but, but uh, it's just Anyway, that was just one of those weird <laughs> thoughts that popped in my head. But anyway, um, yeah, it, it's unfortunate that, yeah, we, we run into barriers, even though we know deep down we're called to do things. Mm-hmm. We, we hear from God prompting us things and yet not always stepping into those. Yeah. Sometimes I think we think, also think that we, oh, we might know just a little better and we'll, we'll work mm-hmm. a different way to get around that that'll be better yeah. than, than jumping into what God's asking us right now. Um, yeah. You notice how it's all about I. Yes. What it we're is. all saying is like I, I, I. So as soon as we make it all about me and what I think and what I and how I think it should go, then it's just like, is this really what God wants to do? Mm-hmm. But then when you switch it to God and like, okay, if you're saying to do this, I'm going to do it anyways, no matter what I think or feel. Then it's just like, the, it's all about him mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. and what he's calling us to do. So just trying to like, who's in the driver's seat? Do we yes. want to be in it or do we want God to be? <laughs> yeah. Are we going to let him be yeah. too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the kind of the, the 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 good thought I think to take away this is just remembering that God selected us. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's a really good kind of ending thought is just we need to remember guys that when God does select us for whatever journey, mission, whatever he's got us to, 
um, or selecting us to prompt, selecting and prompting us to do this, or talk to this person, or send a text out of the blue to this person for whatever reason. I think we just need to remember that he selected us for this. There's a reason we're doing this. And it's not because, well, he selected me, but I'm going to get Michaela or Leanne or somebody to do it for me. I'll tell them and they can go do it. No, <laughs> we've been selected. He's called us because we have a specific purpose and connection with whatever it is that we can bring that, you know, bring God to that in the way he wants it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll leave that as the final thought today, guys, as our time has flown past here. Uh, we, of course, want to thank you guys each for joining us today. Thanks, uh, it's been a lot of good conversation. And I want to thank you guys for watching, uh, just being able to be a part of this each and every week. Mm -hmm. um, and our tech team, of course, this week is behind us, not beside me. So <laughs> we want to thank him as well. Um, and, of course, we want to remember, whoever finds God, finds life. life.